to look like this second equation, Richard? Wouldn't you just like flip the order around so it'd be <coughs> y plus 3x equals 1? Not quite. 3x plus y equals 1? No. Um, oh, we can get this one to look like this one. Let's get this one to look like that one. Oh, but what do we so do? we have x and y on the same side of the equation, so this one we're going to try and get x and y on the same oh, side. Oh, so it'd be two, you just do plus x plus Talk about this guy here, Aiden. Um, I'll run my brother down. Here. And one equals three x plus y. And minus Why could we do that? Minus one minus one almost equals five. Or negative one equals. <coughs> um, oh, here, Stu, dog. Here, let me up. All right, so we'll do minus one. Oh. Why negative one? Because it's like five. I know that's what they mean. In yeah, minus one mostly, one. please. I want to take this equation and make it look like this equation in that instead of having y and x on two different sides of the equal side, have it on both sides? Y on the same side. Yeah, I know that's the Minus. So, y minus 3x equals 1. Minus 1 minus 3x equals 1. Okay, so I heard that 3 will come up with it at the same time. Subtract 3x from both sides. All right, and when we write it here, we'll just write it as negative 3x plus y equals what? Okay, so now, oh, no. both equations look the same in that they have x and y the same side, x and y are in the same order. We can't solve it. Why is that? Because there, if you put, e there, either way, the x, x's won't line up or the y's won't line up. But that's okay, right? Because oh, if we you actually know. only want the x's to cancel or the y's to cancel. Yeah, so that, that means they're well. And so that means there's one solution. Great. So let's make that happen. Let's get either the x's to cancel out or the y's to cancel out. What can you time on? So no, you can't go two. There. So um, to the Can you times by two on the bottom? Negative. Oh, no, negative two on the bottom. So you're eight and are having the same thoughts here. Mm -hmm. Multiply by negative two so that you get the y's to cancel out. So we have. Like negative x plus 2y. Just rewriting the first equation. Oh. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6x minus 2. Next time I'm just going to move somewhere else. All right. Okay. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. And remember to multiply the other side by negative 2. So we get 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Uh, so negative x plus 6x is 5x. Negative 2y plus 2y is negative y. So equals negative 5. Equals negative 5. We add negative 3 and negative 2 together. Divide by 5. So x equals negative 1. Okay, we're halfway there. One half solution. Oh. solution. And then you plug that into the other. Like into any equation. I mean. I'm going to do the first, very first one. What was that? Like the positive one. The positive one? Yeah. Before we subtract the 3x from both sides, that's the one I'm going to use. Right there. Y equals 3 times x, which is negative 1 plus 1, plus 1, y equals negative 3 plus 1, y equals negative 2, so the solution is negative Yay. 1, First, how about that crazy looking parentheses situation? Aiden? Sure. X um, minus 2 y equals 4.6. How do you do that, Richard? We did the distributive five. So if you distribute, you get what Aiden said. 2 times 0.5 x is just 1 x. Um, I'll write that here. 2 times negative y is negative 2 y. 2 times 4.6 is 9.2. 
negative 2.4, negative 3.5. Right. Glad Aiden caught that. I'm not sure how long that would have taken. Missing it, isn't it? sentence to you, it says, one, one equation in a system of linear equations has a slope of negative three, period. Yep. Okay, for your English dead stop, is what they say, instead of period. So, if the slope of this thing is negative three, I know kind of what the equation looks like, but not completely. Sam, could you please face forward? Yeah. Will you? I know it looks something like this. It has a slope of negative 3, so it must be y equals negative 3x plus something plus b. I don't know what this b is. There's just this little uh, fog here. And I don't quite know what the y-intercept is. But the other one says the other equation, <coughs> y equals 4 to the right. It has a slope of 4. So it must look like this. y equals 4x. Plus a mystery. Okay. And then they don't give us any more information. They ask a question, how many solutions does it have? So well, what we know must be enough to know that answer. Um, let's go over first what's possible. Like how many solutions are possible for a system of equations like this? Infinity. Infinity. One or two. None. None. Oh yeah. Infinity one or none, and that's it. Uh, so that's it. So we have to figure out what situation we have here. What do you say, Clint? It's um, one. And why is that? Because the slopes are different. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's enough evidence to say that they must have one solution. Because if they have different slopes, then they're just going to, you know, they're going to be at different slopes, different angles, and they're going to, at some point, they're going to intersect. The only way they could have zero or none, in both those cases, they'd have to both have the same slope, right? I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, zero, zero or infinity, they'd have to have the same slope, right? Same slope, different y-intercepts, mm -hmm. they don't have any solutions. Same slope, same y-intercept, they have infinite solutions. Uh, so that's that. It has one solution. We don't know what the <coughs> y-intercepts are, but even if they're crazy, wacky, big old numbers, one's like a thousand and one's a negative a thousand, they're going to intersect somewhere. <coughs> Whether it be way over there or way over there, they're going to intersect somewhere. Uh, we know that for sure. There's just no way that these two lines can stay away from each other forever. That would be, <coughs> that would be parallel. And there's no way these lines are the same line, because they'd have to have the same <coughs> So we don't know what it is, but we know there's only one solution possible, whatever it is, wherever it is. All right. Now, do you know if they had infinity, because like, you'd have to have the same slope, but would it have to have y intercept as well? Right. And that's, you know, you're right. That's probably why they didn't give you that situation. Or if they did give you the same slope, they'd have to give you something more. Uh, because if they had the same slope, then... Well, depends on what those y-intercepts are. If they have the same y-intercept, the solutions. If they have different y-intercepts, no solutions. No. Any more information. Okay. Uh, you ready to review? Review? Display your knowledge? Yeah. Or B to C? Uh, <coughs> the <piece> of paper. <laughs> Alright. Number one. You get the answer to the y's to the opposites. So they'll cancel out. Bridger? So I times the bottom one by negative, yeah, by negative three. By negative three. And this one by four. Oh, no, two. Oh, it's two. Okay. So the first one multiplied by two is going to give us 12x plus 24y equals 36. The second one multiplied by negative three is going to give us negative 12x, so those will cancel. <coughs> Uh, negative 3 times 8 
this by 2 and this by negative 3, if someone made the numbers smaller, they divided this by 2, no, this by 3, and this by 2, I got the numbers to like go down, so to speak. Oh, That's 2x right. plus, you did that, you divided? Is that Why would you idea? do that? Because it's easier? Just the numbers are smaller. Well, oh, I didn't know you could divide, huh? Remember that, you know, like, so the, the whole idea here is that we are manipulating equations, and as long as we do, what? To an equation? Have to the other side. Same thing to the other side of the equation, same thing to both sides of the equation. Right? The things that we can do to that equation are kind of limitless. We can add the same thing to both sides, we can subtract, we can multiply, we can divide. We can do anything as long as we do the same thing to both sides. There's a lot of things that are not going to be very useful. Right? We don't want to just randomly add uh, an octopus to both sides, though we could because it's the same thing to both sides. But if we want to divide on both sides, we certainly could do that. Now, if not everything is divisible by the number we're dividing by, it's going to make things a little bit tricky. But everything there is divisible by Ooh. 3, and everything here is divisible by 2. And if we do that, we wind up with both equations being 2x plus 4y equals 6. Or negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 6. Richard? Um, so what would a solution, I mean a no solution problem, look like? Uh, this, the fastest answer I can give you is that you'll get zero equals something other than zero. What? It's like oh, so that means that it's a false equation, right? It's not a false. We're talking about false and true results. The true one is always infinite. The false one is always no solution. So zero equals six. No solution is equals three. And if you if you somehow write up with two equals two, it's still true. So you still have infinite solutions. That would never happen. We're not going to cancel out the x's and y's and wind up with a 2, right? Right. Unless there was a 2 hanging out there, like plus 2. We wouldn't have that, right? So, yeah, there we go. True equation, infinite, not true equation, no solution. All right, this one, uh, what, what could we do to one of these equations to get opposite x's or y's? Times by 3 where? On the bottom. All right, so uh, first equation, just the way it looks already. And then 3 times 3 times 9x. 3 times y is 3y. 3 times 15 is 45. Uh, 9x plus 2x is 11x. Again, no y is left over. Four, four, 45 minus 1 is 44. And divided by 11, x is 4. Now that x is 4, I'm going to use this guy before we multiply it by 3. Look at that y, just begging to be picked up. Made, by, made to be by himself. 3 times 4 plus y is 15. Right, Kyla? Huh? 12. 12. We know that's 12. 
also have if we subtract 12 from both sides, then we'll have y equals 3. Solution for count them. Both. No, I got one right. I saw some one solutions, like, a, but I wasn't looking for how many solutions I was looking for for the solution. I agree. So, okay, Mr. Stewart. Yeah. What is it? How about we make a new thing? Like, if you're in the dark, or I'm just putting this out there, we could probably make things off of this. Just no intent. But, like, you're in the dark and you need to be bright or something, you could just go. They already made that. <laughs> 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 it looks like they already made hats. Couldn't they like, actually just put them on the hat? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they are, are hats like that. No, like inside the hat. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they there are. something like that. Damn. Dang it. Never stop dreaming. Maybe stop dreaming. Stop dreaming. What? Oops. Why is what? I don't dream. Now I gave you. You know, I, I asked you to do your best with, uh, you know, graphing s systems of inequalities yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like you did pretty well, like just from graphing the inequalities. But what we're gonna do is make sure we discuss it uh, a little more in depth. Okay. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I did all mine right. Are we gonna have another test this quarter? No. Uh, yeah. Oh, next couple of days we will. What? Oh yeah. So. Yeah, I did. Are you stupid? So make this time to done, please. Time I'm gonna color code this. It'll make it easier to understand exactly what's going on. Now, to, what we're doing is not that complicated. We've graphed inequalities before in two uh, two variables. All you really are doing here is graphing two of those graphs in the same place. So if you do that, well, you did it. But we're still going to talk about it, understand it, and if I ask you questions about the graph, then uh, we're going uh, to strive to understand the answers to those questions. But to start with, we're going to graph both of these on the same plane. So uh, first of all, let's review that there are two parts to the graph of an inequality. What's one of the parts? The slope. Um, if you're like a little bit I'm bigger about picture, the points, I thought. if you're talking about how to find them. well, whenever we have uh, graphed these inequalities on the plane, I've broken it down into there's two main parts to these graphs. Oh. Uh, not y and x. No, I, and that's fair. The line. There's a line. Yeah. There's a line. And what else what? is there? There's, there's going to be dots on one side. So one side like blacked out by dots. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the blacked out half. Mm -hmm. Or the what most people call the shaded half. God, I got it right. Yes. Okay, now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a, line, a line is made of a bunch of points. The points from that line, if I plug the x and y from a point on the line into this inequality, what happens to the inequality? If you plug what? Uh, let's, let's graph the line part, maybe that'll help. So we got the y-intercept to negative 5. Mm -hmm. Over, no, to the left. To the left? Well, it's negative, isn't it? Tell me what to do That's next. To the left, how much? 2. Three. To the left, 2. Or is it 3? Three. 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 I thought it was two. I thought you did pop it in the bottom. Okay, three then. Whether we go to the left three and up two or yes. to the right three and down two, it's all the same. We get the same line. What kind of line should I draw? Uh, a dot. Yeah, uh, solid. Solid. Dot. Dot. Nice. Solid line. It's dotted. Solid. Solid. Because the equals two. Yeah, the equals two. Well, I know it's solid. How about a straight line? Solid. 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 I'm going to keep you here as late as we need to be, so we need to stop. Follow the sidebar stuff. So it would be solid. It would be solid. I'm graphing the blue one, and it's got the equal to. Okay, so my question was, this, this line is made of points. If I take one of those points, 
right? That point has an x and a y assigned to it. If I take that x and y, like this x and y, like uh, 3 comma negative 7, if I plug in a 3 there and a negative 7, what am I going to get on either side? The same. The same. That's the big idea here. That both sides are going to be the same. It's not going to be unequal. Even though it's an inequality, both sides will be the same. Is that okay for both sides to be the same in this blue inequality? Yeah, because it says more equal to. Right, and that's why we make it a solid line. So, this line is included in the graph. And also the blacked out half, what, what half do we black out? The bottom, because y is less than. And y is less than if we shade the low. Okay, the red one now. The red one has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative, no, positive 3, so up uh, 3 and up. What kind of line are we going to use? Not as big as it doesn't have it. No matter how much you rest of your game, you're going to keep away. That's the same as a solution to the system of equations, okay? It's an x and a y that makes both inequalities work. Where, can, where do you think we could find all those points that work for both? In the equation? Uh, the intersection. Yes, the, the, uh, the overlap. Let's be more uh, descriptive, I guess. The overlap of the shaded parts. What about the intersection of the two lines? Why not? It's not a dotted line. The dotted line, right, are points that are not included. So, all the points in here, yes. Point. What about these points on the blue line here? Yeah, yeah because it's all part of the blue and it's part of the red. Like it's in the red shaded area. If we go over here, though, no, it's not part of the red graph. Okay. I'm gonna write your homework up on the board. You can write it down, or you can wait for it to be texted in the way. How do you do it? Whoa! Oh, that's a